This is one of my favorite fruit trees. This is a cherry moya. And it's a, a beautiful tasting fruit. And today I want to plant this out. So it's a good time to plant at the moment. It's late in the afternoon. It's nice and nice and cool and cloudy. It's you know midsummer here at the moment, which is not the ideal ideal time to plant. But if you look after you, after the tree after you plant it for the next couple of months, it should be fine. So you can see here, I've got a, a, a nice mounded um, soil here, and there's two reasons why I've done that. One of the reasons why I've done this is it ensures that I've, I get very good drainage with the fruit tree. Most fruit trees need really good drainage. So you don't want to dig your hole into clay soil, otherwise they'll quickly um, die. So mounting up your soil will ensure that the fruit tree has really good drainage. And secondly, we're on a bit of a slope here. So as the water flows down the block, this like little horseshoe kind of uh, mound here will kind of slow the movement of water down and it'll have more time to soak into this mound of soil where the fruit tree is. Now what we want to do is dig a hole that's just a little little deeper than the pot and about twice the wide. So we'll dig the hole and we'll just put the soil off to the side a little bit. A bit deeper. We'll try that. Okay, we can test the depth there. Grab the cherry moya, put it in, and that looks pretty good. It's just a little bit deeper than the surface of the soil here. The reason why I want it a little bit deeper is that will create a bit of a saucer shape around the tree so that, especially when it's young, when it rains, the water will tend to flow into the, around the, the base of the fruit tree here. Before we plant the fruit tree, I just want to test to make sure that the uh, soil here is, is draining well. So I'll put in a half a bucket of water like this. And I'll come back in 30 minutes and make sure that that water has disappeared. If you've still got a big puddle of water there, it's not a good idea to plant your fruit tree. You either need to find a, a new place or create a bigger mound so that the, the water flows through and doesn't puddle. Okay, that looks like it's drained really well. So that was gone in a couple of minutes, so that's ideal. So the other thing I want to do is make sure that around the hole is nice and moist. So you just got a nice wet hole and it's dry on the outside. It doesn't really give the, the plant much of an opportunity to spread its roots. So we'll give this a good soaking for a couple of minutes. All right, so we got nice damp soil to plant in. So before I plant this, what I want to do is give the whole plant a really good soaking. Quite often when you buy a fruit tree from the nursery, the soil can be very dry. Uh, so what we do is we soak it in a bucket full of water and uh, that will really moisten the whole root ball of the tree. What you'll find is you'll get air bubbles popping out of the top of the, the potting mix. So once they stop, you know that the uh, whole potting soil is nice and moist like that and ready for planting. So we'll tip this maybe upside down. Okay, this is pretty good. It's not, not too root bound, um, so we can, we can plant that straight away. If your uh, fruit tree is root bound, you probably just want to tease the roots out a bit or even slice off the bottom of the root ball if it's really bad. But ideally you don't want to buy a, a root bound fruit tree to begin with. So we'll plant this in like this and make sure it's nice and straight. It's facing the right way. I might just tilt this around a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty straight to me. So what we'll do is, we want to backfill only half the hole with this soil here. So, we'll put this back in. Now, the reason why 
we're doing this is a couple of reasons. Firstly, we want to make sure that the potting mix here has really good con contact with the soil. The roots have to have contact with the soil so that they can spread out. So we'll backfill half of it here, and then we'll just add a bit of a water, bit of water. Now the other reason, the other thing I didn't do was add a whole lot of compost um, in the bottom of the planting hole. And the reason why I didn't want to do that is, is you might get really good, good growth for the first year or two if you do that, but because it's so rich with all that compost, the roots don't spread out. So you don't later on in life you don't have a really good strong root system that's able to handle you know droughts and things like that. So. We just backfill it with a, the natural soil and push down, not too hard, but firm enough just to make sure the soil's, there's no air pockets down there. Then what we do, we'll get, we'll get most of this remaining soil, we'll put that back in the, the bucket and then we'll get some really good quality fertilizer. I've got worm castings here from our worm farm. Now this is the best fertiliser you can get for any plant, any fruit tree or vegetable. So what I'll do, I'll mix in a couple of good handfuls of that. A couple of handfuls go a really long way so you don't need a tremendous amount. And we don't want our fruit tree to be going at a, a tremendously fast pace. We want it to go nice and steady and, and have a really strong trunk. We don't want it really lanky and tall. So. The, the worm castings is really good because it's a really uh, long, slow release fertilizer that's ideal. So, put a bit more soil here. Then we'll just mix it up a bit. Okay. And we'll just put this around the hole. Like that. Beautiful. So, Put it around the hole. Again, press down firm, not too hard. Now with the rest of this soil, we'll try and create a bit of a saucer here. So, like I was saying before, when it rains, or when you're watering the plant, the water will flow down towards the base here, which is really important when it's young. So, we'll just put that back like that, creating a bit of a saucer. Now with the rest of the worm castings I've got, We'll just put a, a thin layer of worm castings, about a centimetre thick, no more, around the base of the tree and even extending out a little bit so that the roots are encouraged to, to, to grow outwards. Now the last thing to do is to mulch the plant well. I've just got some sugar cane mulch here. So we don't need to mulch it ridiculously thick. We want the, the water when it rains to still penetrate through to the soil. So I'm looking at a few centimetres. Just like this. Okay, there you go. We've got a, a, a newly planted cherry moya. Um, I'll leave the steak on for a couple of days just until it settles in a little bit. Uh, and then I'll remove the stake. You don't really want to stake your fruit trees. The actual movement of the wind encourages a good strong root system. So unless the, the plant absolutely needs staking, remove it. So the thing, thing to do from here on is make sure you give it a good water. In summer you want to water it. It's been hot nearly every one or two days for the first few weeks. And then thereafter um, probably give it a water once a week. And hopefully in, in a few years time we'll be eating beautiful cherry moyas off this little fruit tree here.